Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome to my channel. Today I am doing my birthday tradition video which is blank things I've learned in blank years. And this Saturday, June 12th, and you're watching this on June 13th, is my 23rd birthday so I'm going to be doing 23 things I've learned in 23 years. So. Before I get into this video, I just wanted to announce really quickly that yesterday I launched my very first merch line. I'm currently wearing the white crew neck. It says one day at a time. It has a stethoscope, has my initials in the bell. I am so excited to be releasing this line. All of the links are in the description. You guys should totally check it out. It would mean so much to me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for being here. And yeah, so anyways, I just wanted to do a little promo real quick that I'm wearing my merchandise right now. But I'm at the beach right now. Um, well, I'm not like at the beach. I'm actually at McDonald's, but I'm facing the beach and I'm gonna show y'all real quick. So this is me facing the beach. I didn't wanna pay for like beach parking right now. So that's why I'm kind of far from the beach but I thought it would be like a nice view for this video and yeah, I'm really excited. But it wouldn't be a video if I didn't have food to do a little mukbang, mukbang with it. So I stopped at this donut shop called Dawn Donuts. It's right by my campus and it is so cute. The worker there is the sweetest guy ever. Like he is so, so nice. So I got a half dozen donuts. They're all very sugary and this is going to be a very good birthday video. So. My options are four different flavored sprinkled donuts, and then I have a glazed and a sugar donut in here. So that is what we're doing. I'm gonna start with the classic. I'm already so excited, and this is good. Also, this whole half dozen was $4.50, so honestly, amazing. This time, however, I did not get a lemonade, I got a water, because I need water. Like, that lemonade on my last one killed me. So, on to the 23 things I've learned in 23 years. Um, this year, I have grown older and wiser, and I thought I would share my wisdom with you. And I think this is going to be a really funny video when I'm older. I'm going to look back on it, and I'm going to be like, what are you doing? But... I thought it'd be fun, so that's what we're gonna do. Starting with number one, we're gonna start off gently. The very first thing that I've learned is to always stand up for yourself. You don't deserve to be trashed on, or even if it's not intentional, just treated poorly, you don't deserve that. And you should know that you don't deserve that, and you should always stand up for yourself, because you owe that to yourself. You, like, work so hard to exist, to do your work, to do your school, to do whatever you're doing, and you owe that to yourself and to all your efforts that you defend yourself when something isn't going right. And it doesn't mean that the world's out to get you. I'm not trying to say that like people are vicious. They may not know that they're hurting you, but stand up for yourself anyways, fix the problem and move on because it's the easiest way to live and you deserve it. All right, tip number two. Mental health is very important. Um, I don't think it's talked about enough. I know that our generation is doing a better job about talking about it, but in general, it's very important. If you don't take a break to take care of your mental health, then your body's gonna decide when it's going to crash and that's going to negatively impact whatever you're trying to do. And I'm not talking about mental health, like strictly those with mental illnesses, but I am including them. Um, but mental health is important for everyone. You can have no mental illnesses, no depression, no anxiety, but you still experience depression, you still experience anxiety and all those things and you need to take care of yourself and decide when you need to take a break. And if you don't schedule in those break times, then your body will decide when to schedule in that break time and you're not gonna like when your body decides to schedule in that break time. That's really important. I've learned that a lot, especially in nursing school. I have to literally pencil in like a morning that I don't do work or school just to like recuperate, watch some TikTok, stay in bed, whatever I need to do that day. Sometimes it's taking a shower, sometimes going for a walk, sometimes it's visiting a friend, but whatever it is, you need to take that break because your mental health is very important. All right, tip number three, and this is going to be an interesting tip because it is the last time that this tip will apply to me. School is not the most important thing in the entire world. Um, it is very important. You do get your career that way. A lot of people do. I mean, everyone goes on different paths, but for me personally, the path required some extra school. But it's not everything. 
and you cannot place your entire worth, your entire personality, your entire everything into your school. I know a lot of people uh, make jokes and memes about GT kid burnout in high school, um, but it's very true. I was a GT kid in high school, and sometimes when you're told that you're good at school your whole life, you think that your ability to do school is everything, and your ability to do school is not going to be anything ever. It's not gonna give you a career. It's not gonna give you anything. You have to be good at the job you wanna do or love the job that you wanna do. You have to love the research that you're doing or want to do the research that you're doing or maybe you picked a job because it has financial benefits and you don't love doing it but you thought it was the best job to fit your lifestyle and that's okay too. But don't put all your worth in school because one day school's gonna be over and you will be very lost I think I made school and being like super productive in school one of my like main personality traits during undergrad and then I came here and I'm like just okay at school I'm passing my classes I'm not top of the class I'm not bottom of the class but I'm just here and that like blew my personality for a second but school's not everything and it's not meant to be your personality it's not meant to be like the most important thing in your life I'm studying now to be a nurse and I'm not studying to be a school girl you know if that I don't know if that makes sense basically what I'm trying to say is don't place your worth and your self into your grades and into your schooling because that is not who you are you are simply being molded into the nurse that you want to be or you're simply being molded into the doctor you want to be or the teacher you want to be or whatever it is that you're trying to be that is what you're doing in school. That is it. Don't give it any more attention than that. And C's get degrees. For real. All right, well, I already finished my first donut and I'm only on number four, so that's going to be, yeah. All right, so tip number four is going to come with this bright green sprinkled donut very beautiful number four is vulnerability can be very scary but it can be a very good thing and that's really hard for me to say because I'm not a vulnerable person and I don't like to talk about like feelings and stuff like I don't know I think it's so important to talk about them but I just don't want to do it it can be really scary especially having this YouTube channel a lot of people from my school are watching me go through this program and not in a bad way but people are waiting for me to break sometimes like how is she functioning how does she have her life together and obviously I don't have my life together and I don't want to give anyone false impressions of my life I just I don't cry like a lot um, I don't have a lot of like full breakdowns and I think that that's what like throws people off because they think that because I like look like this that I'm okay. So I've been working a lot on this channel to like try to be like more honest when I'm not doing okay. Um, like last week was like one of my last videos I talked about not doing well on a pharmacology test and how that was really hard and how my self-esteem is crushed until my pharmacology test that I have on June 22nd. So, um, yeah, little things like that. This semester has been really hard. Um, my highest grade that I got in the first round of tests was not that high of a grade. I don't have it all together, and I want y'all to know that I don't have it all together. I'm not trying to, like, flex that I don't have it all together, but I'm trying to be honest and tell you that I don't have it all together. Um, and then one of the hardest videos for me to post was actually my finals week vlog from first semester because of the way that my semester ended. And if you guys want to watch that video, you can see what happened. But basically it required a level of vulnerability that I'm not always comfortable with and I'm working on it, but it's really important. And every time that I overshare on the internet, I feel better. It's important, it's scary, but it's good. And it brings people together and it reminds them that they're not alone in this world. So with that, I'm gonna take my first bite. Chef's kiss. I'm doing my very best to be as vulnerable as I'm comfortable with, and I'm pushing that comfort zone every single day. So, I hope you guys know that. I'm literally filming right now with my like acne face and no makeup, and 
eating a bunch of donuts in my car. So this is this is the real life, okay guys? All right, number five. This is like a perfect segue for me. You don't owe anyone anything. So what I'm trying to say with that is, like I mentioned, vulnerability can be scary, but it's good. People are constantly encouraging me to like share certain aspects of my life that I don't always want to share, or maybe I do want to share, but it's not the right time. Or they see me in real life at an event and they're like, where's your vlog camera? You're not vlogging this, so therefore you're being fake. Things like that really bother me because um, first off, I am doing this because I love doing this. I love sharing my life on the internet and I love engaging with people, but I don't have a camera on me 24 seven and I don't vlog every single moment of my life and I don't owe anyone to vlog every single second of my life because if there's something that I don't wanna share, it's because I don't wanna share it and I deserve that autonomy and I don't owe anybody that. One of the things that's been really popular in my questions whenever I post on Instagram is people asking me life plans that I'm not ready to share on social media yet and it's not because I'm never gonna tell you, it's not because it's a secret forever and ever and ever, but it's not the right time and I promise that I will share everything and everything in time so please respect that um, and yeah, I think it's important to know that even, not, not just on a YouTube platform, but in general, you don't owe anybody explanations for things you're doing. You can take an off day without explaining why. You don't have to explain your mental health situation to somebody when you tell them that you don't want to go to a party. You don't have to justify your every action and you don't owe anybody that. All right, these are perfectly falling into place because number six is it's okay to take a night in. You're allowed to say no to an event I say no to a lot of events. Um, my friends get mad at me because I say no to a lot of events. But I'm one of those people who needs like a break alone. Like when I want to take a break from school, going out does not make me feel better. I feel better staying in, watching a movie in my bed with Shamu, not necessarily like going out to drink or something like that. Um, I enjoy doing that. But to me, that's like taxing work. It's not like restful work, if that makes sense. There's a helicopter. You're allowed to say no, um, don't feel bad, especially when you're in your 20s and everybody just wants to go like bar hopping and stuff all the time. That's cool if that's something that you love doing, but if you need to take a break, it's okay to take a break. If your friends are real friends, they will understand that you need that break and it's okay to take a night in. So I just wanna let you know that. I think a lot of people make college and nursing school and everything just like, people make out your 20s to be constant parties constant socializing and if that's not the life you're trying to live that's okay too both things are good socializing is good staying in is good and you just need to listen to your body and your real friends will respect that number seven is actually the exact opposite of number six but number seven is it's also okay to take a night out even if you have something to do. This is one thing I've had to learn as well because in nursing school, there's no way you're going to learn everything. There's no way for you to study everything. And honestly, I started off in nursing school feeling guilty every single second that I wasn't spending studying. And I still experience that to an extent. I just wanna let you know that there's literally no way for you to do everything in nursing school. You're just not going to know everything. So it's okay if you need a break and you need to go socialize with your friends and decompress. Um, if you wanna go get some drinks with your friends, get some margaritas, go to the beach, whatever it is that you like doing, you are allowed to do that. Even if that means you don't read a chapter and you read that chapter the next day or don't skip your assignments or anything like that. But if you need to take a break from studying, even if you haven't been the most productive, it's because your body wants you to take a break and you should go socialize with your friends and you should go out to lunch or go out to dinner or whatever it is. We're gonna shake it up for the next donut and get this glazed one. There it is in all of its glory, a glazed donut. That's the next donut on today's list. Tip number eight, um, animals are the very best therapy. 
those of y'all who watch my channel know that this year I got a cat named Shamu. The glazed one is okay. However, I think the other ones were better. I absolutely love my cat. He's so funny and he has made me laugh even when I'm having the worst day. He comes and sleeps with me even when I feel like a garbage human being. And honestly, they're the very best therapy there is out there. He makes people smile. Everyone loves coming over and playing with him. Um, my roommates, whenever they have their friends over, they're like, oh my gosh, where's the cat? Like, people love him and it makes me so happy. And he brings me so much serotonin. Animals are amazing therapy. If you're able to get an animal, especially a shelter animal, because Shamu's from the shelter and he otherwise would not have had a loving home, go adopt an animal from the shelter and love them and treat them fairly and they're amazing and they will do amazing things for you. So get an animal. Animals are the best. Tip number nine is for my ladies out there. Um, you should always have a girl gang, always. Um, girlfriends are forever. Um, I don't think I've always had like a lot of girlfriends. Um, I've had friends. I'm not gonna be, I'm not about to be one of those girls who's like, I only hang out with guys because they're less drama. No. I pretty much only hung out with Kyle though when I was in undergrad, which is good because I love him. Um, and then I hung out with Mariana a lot. She's my bestie and I love her so much and I miss her so much. But in nursing school, I've been surrounded by a lot of bad women and I love it. And you should have a girl gang at all times um, to support you and love you. And yeah, I've never had like a girl gang before. Amazing. The girls I hang out with literally love me no matter what and hype me up no matter what. And I'm obsessed with them. So have a girl gang. Even if you have a boyfriend, you can have a boyfriend and have girlfriends and it's a great life. Freaking start one. Tip number 10. There we go. Tip number 10 is work hard, play hard. I don't know what to say other than you should work hard um, as much as you can. Work very hard. Like, you only get one chance to do all of this. One chance at being 20, one chance at being 21, one chance at being 22, 23, and it goes on. So live it up. Work hard, play hard. Um, live life to the fullest and party it up. Tip number 11 is that you are not your mental illness. I think it's really easy for a lot of people to think about mental illness like it defines them, um, that they're defined by their depression or they're defined by their anxiety, and that makes me really sad that they feel that that is their only defining characteristic. You are a lot more than what your brain chemistry is doing, and I know it's really hard to think beyond your mental illness because you live in your brain, so you don't get to see yourself the way that other people see you. And so, if no one's told you today, I think you are brave and beautiful and smart, and you are worthy of love, and I'm very proud of you. Number 12, I don't wanna drop an F-bomb, so I'm just gonna say, frick, stigma culture. Um, it really, really sends me to the next planet. And this isn't even about like a specific thing. Literally, why do you hold yourself back because of the stigmas that society has just made up for no reason other than to be hateful? That really breaks my heart. Um, I know it's not always the person's fault too because sometimes it's just an unsafe environment and it's literally just based in stigma culture. One of my biggest pet peeves is when I have like really bad cramps and I'm in a public setting with friends or at school or whatever and I say I have really bad cramps and somebody says oh my gosh why would you say something like that in public and it's like you can say you have a really bad headache, but the second someone says they have really bad cramps, it's all of a sudden like bad, wrong, dirty. That makes no sense. Y'all stop following stupid stigmas. Stop following dumb taboo culture. It's dumb. You should be allowed to say whatever you want. Exist however you want to exist and do not like form yourself in your words by what society thinks might be weird because you are wasting so much life and so much potential in your life. Um, that just like makes me really sad. Um, there's a lot of things that I like want to destigmatize. I've made a lot of videos on skin conditions. I made a video on like TMI girl chat. 
um, where I talked about shaving and birth control and periods and all the things. I am an unfiltered box going to say what I want to say and do what I want to do on my YouTube channel. So honestly, screw stigma culture. It makes me so upset that people think that they have to hold back something that they want to share just because someone's gonna think it's weird or wrong. Tip number 13, it's okay to cry sometimes. This is a reminder for myself and for all the people who don't do feelings in public. That is a toughie, especially as a nursing student. I've seen like a lot of really, really, really fricked up things this semester um, that have been hard to come home to process. This semester is all like psychiatric and I also spent my med surge clinicals on the trauma unit. So I saw some really sad and aggressive things and it's okay to come home and have a breakdown over it, for real. Or go to the closet or the bathroom, have a breakdown and you do you, um, or you can have a breakdown in public, I don't care. Um, I know it's really hard to show emotions in public, but if you need to cry, it's okay to cry. I think a lot of people who cry more are able to like get all their feelings out and then keep going a little better than people like me who don't really do the whole feelings thing and then just bottle it up until you have like a whole mental breakdown. It's okay to cry sometimes and it's healthy to cry sometimes and cry it out. But after you cry it out, play Chiquitita from Mamma Mia in your car and you'll be okay. Tip number 14. It's okay to spend money. I put this one in there also because I am always terrified to spend any money ever. And I lived a extremely frugal college life, like ridiculously frugal college life. I worked so many hours over the summers at this one place, like literally 90 hours a week for several weeks to make money. And then I got free rent and free food. So I never ate out ever, 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 ever. And I just, overworked myself and I was very unhappy just because I put a lot of value on money which is important because college is expensive. Being a student is very hard because you can't have a full-time job but you still have to pay rent and get groceries and gas and books and all the things and it's expensive so it's hard to be okay spending money but do not attack yourself for the day you don't have time to make dinner and you go get a $4 chicken nugget from wherever. Like, that, it's okay. It's, it's okay. If you can spend $4, it's okay. It'll be okay. Do not make yourself feel guilty. I literally, like, would feel so guilty for getting, like, a vending machine snack when I forgot to bring food to school. Like, it is okay, stop shaming yourself for spending money when you need to. Be good with your money, budget, stick to your budget as much as humanly possible, but you are not gonna die if you go $3 over your budget. You're not. Frick. Okay, well I've had three donuts and I think I have a tummy ache already. I pre-medicated this mukbang, but give me a second and I'll go for the next one. Just give me, just give me a second. Tip number 15. Stop taking things personally because 99% of the time it isn't personal. This one is very important to me. Think about the decisions that you make in your life and how often those decisions are like personally trying to target someone. Like we are humans with good intentions and people are not out to get you as much as you think they are sometimes. Um, so try not to take everything so personally. Even if somebody is directly attacking you, try not to take it personally because it sounds like they're a rude person and they have nothing else to do with their lives but come at you. I have good intentions. Um, I try to be respectful to people and I try to make friends with people and I'm doing my best but I'm still human and I try to think about how other people are also doing their best and that they're still human and not take any of their comments personally. Sometimes people are tired, sometimes people are having a bad day, sometimes people's messages are misconstrued. I'm not out to get anyone and I don't believe people are out to get me. We're all just doing our best, we're all humans. <laughs> all right. We're gonna go for the sugar donut. Donut number four is this sugar donut beautiful amazing tip number tip number 16 is a little merch shout out take everything one day at a time
this one's good. Amazing. My favorite. Mm hmm This is my favorite donut. Thank you. I found it. This is the one. This one sets my soul on fire. Anyways. Take everything one day at a time. Um, it's really easy to get overwhelmed by life, especially in your 20s. Some people I've known have been graduated since they've been 18 and they chose a different path that wasn't college and they have a full-time job or they're married or they have kids. We're all in just weird stages where like half of my friends have like families and they're like married and stuff. The other half has never had a significant other in their entire lives. Some people are going to school for like another 10 years. Some people never went to college. Everyone's just in a different boat. Of course, I want to get married. Of course, I want to be done with school like a lot of my friends are. And of course, I want to move on with my life. But that's not what I need to focus on right now. Right now, I need to focus on my program and graduating my program. And focusing on my program is also overwhelming in its own. So I have to take it one day at a time and make a to-do list. What do I need to get done today? What can I do today that my future self will thank me for? Mm. Oh, this one's also important. Tip number 17 is that you have the full ability to make friends. And this one has like a personal story attached. So when I was in college, I tried joining these organizations. Someone told me that because I didn't really feel comfortable talking to them and didn't really feel comfortable posting on social media or whatever, and I was in that group that that must mean that I had social anxiety. And social anxiety is a very real thing. It's a real disorder, but it is not what I had, which I didn't realize for a very long time. I realized that I was trying to put myself into like a box of like what they were, and that is not what I was. And me trying to force myself to be in their group with that personality was doing myself a disservice. The person that I am in my full glory, in all of my glory, is also worthy of love and affection and friendship and I shouldn't have to like block off aspects of myself to make friends. Although they are great people and I still talk to a lot of them, it was not like meant to be my group of closest friends. And that's okay um, because everyone learns like where they fit in better and where they fit in differently and you're valuable and desired just as you are. So don't change yourself to fit into a box and to fit into a friendship box you can make friends solely exactly how you are tip number 18 is that you're not alone in anything so whether you're dealing with health issues whether you're dealing with physical issues whether you're struggling in school whether you're going through a life event um, you're not alone there's a gazillion billion people in the world you should not be afraid to reach out and ask for help for anything that you're struggling with because I promise you're not the only one who is experiencing that struggle Part of sharing my life on this YouTube channel has been really great in the sense that people will message me and say like, wow, like you're going through the exact same thing that I'm going through and it's a nice reminder that it's not just me who feels like this, who feels overwhelmed, who feels tired, who feels exhausted, who um, is having a mental breakdown in my car after visiting a certain patient. Like, that's okay, you're not alone and um, yeah, don't ever feel alone because you're not. I'll bring out this half again, I'm sorry. I needed a break. Um, tip number 19 is to do the things that you want to try. That was YouTube for me. I have always wanted to start a YouTube channel. I made a lot of jokes about it, but it was because I was serious and I like thought people would make fun of me and people have made fun of me. At the end of the day, having this YouTube channel brings me a lot more fulfillment than anything. I absolutely love creating content. I love being a content creator. I love that I get to do this throughout the program and it's really, really special to me. It's really dear to my heart. I just love YouTube so much and I'm so glad I finally did it. I'm so glad I finally did something that I wanted to try. A year ago, I was filming the same video with my iPhone sitting in my car in a Sonic parking lot and here I am now filming on my camera and I have a monetized platform and I'm wearing my merchandise. Like that is just so cool. And yeah, it just makes me so happy. Tip number 20 is to celebrate all of the little things. I like to celebrate exams by getting an ice cream. 
even if I didn't do well, even if I barely passed. Life is too short to not come up with little random stupid things to celebrate. And you should celebrate your accomplishments and yourself and that you're still alive today to tell the story. Tip number 21 is that you don't have to get everything right the first time. That one, I don't know why, but I always struggled with that. Like I would try something and I wouldn't be good at it, so then I would just never try it again. You don't have to be good at everything this first time you try it. And you should try all the things that you love and work hard and get good at them and enjoy yourself doing what you wanna do. And I'm still a work in progress, but you don't have to be perfect. Tip number 22 is to be vocal about things that you're passionate about. So I know that for me, I am a white heterosexual student. That means that it's important to me to support communities that would not have the respect that I have. I don't like to say that they don't have a voice because they absolutely have a voice, but their voice is disrespected by hateful communities. So I have to advocate for them. Just like you have to advocate for your patients, just like you have to advocate for yourself, you should also always advocate for the minorities and the people who don't have the opportunities that you have and try to be the most inclusive environment that you can be. And when I'm talking about inclusivity, I'm saying call people what they ask you to call them. If you mess up somebody's pronouns, correct yourself immediately and you will get it down. I promise you are a smart person and you can learn what somebody wants to be called. And tip number 23 is my very last one. And it is that you are always worthy of love and nothing can take that from you. No failure, no mistake can take away the fact that you are worthy of love. I remember when I didn't do very well on one of my exams, I was very scared to tell my YouTube channel and to tell my friends that I didn't do well on an exam, which is so silly because me not doing well on a pharmacology exam does not make me no longer worthy of love from my friends and from my supporters and from those of you who are here for me. I'm still worthy. I'm still the same person. I'm just the same person who got a bad test score one time. And yeah, I'm worthy of love and so are you and nothing that you can do will ever change that. Anyways, that concludes my 23 things. This video is literally like two hours long because I just rambled. So we'll see what happens with that. But I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. It's a little different, but it's like my birthday tradition. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Um, thank you for loving me. And it means a lot that you're here. If you watch this whole video, comment some... Comment some birthday cake emojis because it's my birthday. Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. And don't forget to check out my merch, which will be linked in the description. It is very cute and I'm very proud of it. So feel free to check it out so you guys can match me. I'm currently wearing the white crew neck in large in case you want like a size reference. But yeah, thank you for being here and I'll see you guys next week. I hope you have an amazing one. Bye.